let's thump through this beautiful old book of the Netherlands. Uh, perhaps this video will be quite long anyway. It's a book of 1948 and it was issued by the Muiderkring and it was in those days a very famous publisher. They also published Radio Bulletin and that was also a very um, important magazine uh, through the 1970s and perhaps they stopped in the 1980s. I don't know that exactly. But anyway, this is all about measuring instruments. 1948. Perhaps this video will be quite long, longer than say 15 minutes or so. Anyway, tools that you need and that have a certain aim. Doelmatig gereedschap. That's what they tell here about a measure, measuring devices and the, the issue of measuring could be anything, voltage, current, frequency, etc, etc. And these were popular meters in those days. The so-called AVO meter, ampere, volt, ohms meter. It was extremely expensive in those days. I couldn't afford it in the 1960s anyway. Here is a tube tester. Of course in those days tubes were uh, say uh, everywhere. Transistors in 1948 were not uh, available. Perhaps in the laboratories, the Bell laboratories for instance, transistors were available. But anyway, a measuring transmitter works from 95 kilo cycles to 80 mega cycles. Of course in those days you had also uh, say VHF circuits. Of course, the radar was invented in World War II and of course radar works on in the centimeter waves. So anyway, uh, it, it, they, had, they needed uh, measurement devices to measure also high frequencies. Here a measuring a transmitter for surface and experiment. Uh, what? Uh, does this uh, measuring transmitter do the properties of that measuring transmitter? It is an echo oscillator and it works between 30 kilohertz and 30 megahertz. So that's a quite big frequency band. Very good. And here's the schematic. And of course it's a tube oscillator. Uh, the coils were, were quite easily to make because of the extremely high impedance on the grids on the grid of the oscillator tube. So no damping here. And everyone in a certain way everyone could make such an, an oscillator. Of course you had to understand something of electronics but anyway. It was more easy compared to say the 1970s, 80s where transistors uh, had to do this job and their impedance was always a problem. The impedance was in those cases quite low and that damped in general um, the oscillator coil. But there were special circuits, for instance the grounded base a circuit for a, for a transistor that could do this job anyway. Of course in those days all these perfect drawings of how you had to make that and that was very helpful for everyone. 
even the cabinet, all these drawings with all these holes, etc. etc. Very interesting. Anyway, here is an article about that measuring transmitter in practice. And they told many things about trimming that measuring transmitter. Uh, tube comparison, comparing the tubes. Uh, when in a, in a radio uh, a tube had to be replaced, it could be that the other tube had somewhat other properties. And here the classical circuit for a modern superheterodyne. How all the, uh, say, tuned circuits are uh, blended into the, uh, the circuit. And here you see the frequency curves of that meter. And it's very, very interesting uh, that they show the typical properties. And here all the frequency bands. And uh, that measuring transmitter went from 3000 up to 10 meters. So approximately, uh, say, uh, 30 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz. That was a quite big band. Uh, frequency, wavelengths, uh, scale. When you have a ruler, do this. And do that, and you can see exactly um, all the the things that you need to make good quality radio calls. There are much more uh, of these, say, uh, graphics or so. Again, a measuring transmitter with less lesser properties. Uh, 30 kilohertz up to say uh, 30 megahertz is a quite big frequency band and it could be a problem to make it anyway so this is a more or less simpler easier circuit and you can uh, give this measuring transmitter you can mount it in such a box that was a kind of advice and here the measuring bridge, and that's very, very important. It is, in my opinion, a kind of Wheatstone bridge. That's here. And here you see uh, the properties of such a bridge. Here is that bridge. And in such a bridge, all um, it's all about balance. When the properties here on these four locations are exactly the same. The bridge is in balance and the milliampere meter um, doesn't show uh, any position. It's more or less on zero. But when one of these um, electronic elements, it could be a resistor or a capacitor or even a coil, coil uh, differs somewhat the meter will move in a certain direction. And of course, uh, I say here, milliampere meter could be AC, could be DC. So uh, perhaps when you want to use this circuit, you need at first a diode here to rectify uh, AC voltages. Anyway, this is a good way, interesting way to do experiments. And the Wheatstone Bridge in, in all kinds of variations is extremely important in electronics. Let's go further. Again, a measuring bridge. Uh, capacities can be measured from 10 picofarad to 100 microfarad resistors of 1 ohm up to 5 mega ohm. So that was a very, very good measuring bridge. 
1948. Of course here there's also a Wheatstone Bridge. Perhaps you cannot see that directly, but it is surely here. And it's responsible for the measuring results. This is the part of the Wheatstone Bridge and also this one and that one anyway. Study it, perhaps it's interesting and you can also try to apply this circuit for instance in a transistor circuit, but nowadays that's uh, more or less useless in a certain way, everything is digital, etc, etc. The scale, they published the scale, uh, so you could take it out and print it, glue it, etc, on the potentiometer, etc. The mini scope, it's an oscilloscope, a tiny oscilloscope for uh, 1948. Here are all the uh, important, here is all the important information about the used uh, capacitors, resistors, etc. Transformer. And here is that circuit. I want to show it for everyone interested to make a homebrew oscilloscope. This is a gas filled tube that sets the frequency and here you see the resistor and on a certain moment the gas inside here is ionized. So there is a, a voltage drop suddenly on a certain frequency between these two electrodes and they are uh, set where that uh, voltage drop happens is set with this whole scale of um, capacitors. So in fact it's a frequency dependent circuit. Frequency is set by all these capacitors and they um, are decisive for the moment where this gas filled tube uh, breaks down between these two electrodes. Anyway, interesting and still you can use this circuit. And uh, that gas filled uh, electrode can be replaced in modern times by a so called thyristor. And the name is uh, developed out of door. Tyrus means door, so here inside it's a kind of door that's opened here with the help of these capacitors for a long time or a short time, etc. Uh, drawings, how to make it. How to control coils in surface. Well, that's interesting. Of course, in the 1940s, 1950s, uh, radio coils were very, very uh, important in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, frequency dependent elements, oscillator circuits, VFO circuits, uh, help oscillator, for instance, in a superheatron dyne. So it was very important to know the properties of coils. And this is a circuit with which you can uh, test them. Very important, interesting. The Omni selector, I skip it, it's far too, far too uh, cumbersome. It has everything to do with the tube technology of the 1940s and the 1950s. And I think it's not relevant nowadays to understand something about radio tubes. But anyway, let's look at it for a moment. The signal mirror. I don't know exactly what I mean here. They call it, uh, literally translated, a traveling rectifier, but anyway. 
I think it used to diminish to test level of the signal in a certain radio circuit. Again a tube tester and of course there are many many things about tube testing and when it comes to uh, tube tubes radio tubes go to the channel of all American 5 radio that's the best channel uh, when you want to learn something about um, radio tubes here for instance and here this is the fundamental measuring uh, circuit the filament voltage and filament current uh, the grid voltage the negative grid voltage when you make the grid negative the the it has an effect on the way how the electrons flow from the cathode to the anode very interesting do some research on the world art web and on the YouTube channel of All American 5 Radio. And here again, well, the universal meter nowadays uh, we have it here. The universal meter is extremely common, so we don't have to. Uh, we don't have to. Uh, this, for instance, is a universal meter. You can buy it everywhere and it's not expensive, etc. But in those days, 1948, it was a, a kind of a special instrument only for a radio people that were working in radio technology. Anyway. This shows how such a meter uh, was made. A calculation of a universal shunt. Shunting a milliampere meter is always an issue. There are videos on my YouTube channel how to do that. This, is a, this shows a very good way. There is the milliampere milliampere meter has of course a certain resistance. <coughs> there are a few shunts that are practically constantly here switch between one the one and the other electrode. So that means when these resistors are chosen in a proper way the milliampere meter cannot be damaged. So when you shortcut one of the shunts it will mean that the current here goes up. When you shortcut two of them the current will go sorry I don't I, the current will go down because that meter is more or less uh, short cutted in a certain way anyway uh, I always do my videos in one take so study it the principles are simple uh, when there is 